There is a bit to do before the servlet from the previous lesson can be deployed to the server. Only applications can be deployed, so it's necessary to package this servlet as an application. An application is packaged as a WAR file. That's a web archive file, also called an application archive. Such a file is constructed by using the jar utility of Java. Actually, a WAR file is a jar file, but it has a different suffix on its name, and it contains specific files inside specific directories. There's more than one way to build a WAR file. If you're using an IDE as your development environment, you may be able to construct the WAR file inside it. Also, the ant utility can be used to construct a WAR file, and I'll be showing you how you can use ant to do all sorts of things later. Right now, I'm going to show you the fundamental way to construct such a file. You start out by creating a directory structure to hold everything that goes into the application. I've already done that and here's what it looks like. I have decided to call this application Hello App. Now I've included a few more directories here than are really needed for such a simple application but that's just so I can show you how things are constructed. All these directories will come into play in future lessons. The source directory, the SRC directory, normally contains the source files of the servlets and the Java beans and so on. It doesn't really have to be here because you don't really have to deploy the source code of these items. The web directory contains JSP pages and HTML pages. We don't have any with this application, but we'll be adding some later. Actually, if you prefer, you can name this directory anything you like you can have more than one of these directories for a large application. The web INF directory must be present and it must have this name in all uppercase. It has a subdirectory named classes. These are the class files of the servlets that are part of this application. We'll be putting our servlet class file in this directory here in just a minute. You may have some data files that are used by the servlets, and you can put those here in the etc directory. And your servlets may use other classes, and these classes can be stored in jar files in the live directory. For example, if you're using a relational database, the jar file holding its classes will be stored here. Now the next step in getting our WAR file ready is to put the servlet class file in the right directory. For this simple application, there is only one more file required. The list and description of things in the application is kept in an XML file with the name WebXML. This is a very important configuration file. It's known as the deployment descriptor and its purpose is to tell the server what you've got in here. You can put things in the various directories, but if they're not listed in this file, they will not be found by the server. Now I'm going to skip over all of this stuff up here at the top for right now. It all has to do with XML and defining tags and what have you, and that's all coming up later in a series of movies on XML. The overall surrounding tag is the web app tag. Between the opening and closing web app tags, you'll find names and configuration information on the included files. In this example, a pair of tags for one servlet is included. Inside the servlet opening and closing tags is the name of the class file, which is Howdy Servlet, and a tag name by which it is known inside this XML file. XML can be a little confusing because of the way its tags are structured. In this example, the servlet class file is named and given the local tag name Fred. This is the name of the actual class file of this particular servlet. Because it's a servlet, the server will know to find it in the classes directory. This is the servlet mapping tag. We know that we're talking about the same servlet because the servlet name is specified. This time the URL path name is being defined. 
The complete URL for this servlet is the name of the host and server, followed by the name shown here. Now, you can use just a simple name for it if you wish, but I chose to include the word Jabber as part of the name so you can see how that path comes out when you address the servlet. This whole thing has so many parts with names, it's very easy to lose track of what's what. In the future, you'll see that there are lots of things that can be included in the deployment descriptor. Not only can a servlet have an alias, as shown here, you can specify a data file that's used at startup a specific error page to be displayed when the servlet doesn't work, and other things. As we go further along, more and more tags will be added to this deployment directory. Now this file goes into the web directory for the application. We're now ready to build the WAR file. First, you switch to the directory for the application. The WAR file is created with the jar command. You name everything that you want to include in the file. The command line for the jar file is very much like the Unix tar command line. C for create, V for verbose, and F means that the next name on the command line is the name of the output file, the one being created. The rest of the names of the files and directories to be included. Most of these directories are empty, but I include them here so you can see how this thing works. There, a war file is now ready to be deployed to the server. And that's the next lesson, deploying the war file to the server.